Okay, brother, we're going to uh, move on. Um, let's go to John uh, 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, it's interesting because uh, not only is that Jesus Christ himself saying that, but he, who's he talking to? A religious leader named Nicodemus. Yes, and 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 uh, uh, if we continue reading, we find that this Nicodemus is like he just doesn't get it, and Jesus says, "How can you not even understand this? You know, you're one of the religious leaders, and you don't understand this simple concept that we must be born again." And uh, but Nicodemus is saying, "How can I be born from my mother's womb a second time?" And what does Jesus say? He said, uh, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't see it. Yes. Nor enter it, the, yes. the text says. Yes. Uh, he talks about this born again, this birth being not a physical birth, as Nicodemus is imagining it, <laughs> but it's a spiritual birth. We need to be born spiritually. Uh, another uh, translation was says, rather than born again, it says born from above. Born from above, which means our connection to God is reestablished. Spiritually, we get connected again. We're, we're plugged back into the internet of God, so we're connected to Him. Uh, we're plugged back into the, to the God for the, the source of His power. Born from above. Born from above. And it says that we have become a new creature. You're, you're born, and now you're a new person, a new creature. I, I find it interesting, the, the scripture, and, and how, uh, you know, for me to uh, enter this world, for me to see this world, I had to be born into this world. One way I got into this world, through my mom. My mom went through a lot of labor mm -hmm. to get me into this world. And, and, and Jesus Christ, he went through a lot of labor, uh, a lot of pain up on that cross uh, to get me into God's kingdom so I could see God's kingdom so I could enter God's kingdom and there's only one way I'm going to get into God's kingdom Jesus said he is the way yeah so um, kind of interesting it, it is interesting when you uh, refer to um, your mother that gave birth to you she went through these birth pains and then when Jesus is crucified on the cross uh, some of you may not be aware of this but uh, crucifixion um, people die from suffocation because hanging from the cross they can't breathe they have to pull themselves up in agony to catch a breath and then fall back down and I guess that when your, your analogy of uh, birth pains it, it's, it would be a pretty good comparison every, every time he pulls up for another breath is another pain that he's taking for your benefit and for mine so that our sins can be forgiven and we could be born spiritually Amen all right, so let's uh, let's go to Second Corinthians five seventeen and see what that says about it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay, so uh, when a person is born again and reconnected they've absolutely become a new it says creature or a new person uh, that's pretty exciting to me uh, to know that uh, you know I get I, I've got a kind of a fresh start now a fresh start and I'm connected to God for, for the, forever from this point on so well let's go to the um, the the, the concept that I, I encounter a lot where people say well maybe uh, I can just solve this sin problem on my own maybe I don't need Jesus Christ maybe I'll just fix the problem on my own through a religion or my uh, charitable giving or whatever so let's, uh, let's talk about that next and, and uh, go to Ephesians 2, 8, 9 Ephesians 2, 8, 9 for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, this is uh, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 are 
really, really important verses, uh, I think, to understand uh, salvation. Uh, salvation uh, based upon the grace of God through our faith in Jesus' death on the cross so our sins can be forgiven. Uh, uh, but I found that a lot of people think that this gift in that verse is talking about faith. Uh, so let's read that a second time and take a close look at that. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, so you see how some people could be confused, and they think that this a gift is the faith. But the fact is, if you read it again, I'm going to stop you at the key point there. For by grace are ye saved. Saved. So the whole subject of this verse is being saved. So it's salvation. Salvation we're talking about. It's the gift. Okay. Yes. Now read, continue. Read. So by grace are we saved, we're talking about salvation. Through faith. So we get our salvation through faith. Okay. Continue reading, please. It is the gift of God. So the, the uh, salvation is the gift. And we receive this gift through our faith in Jesus Christ. And it says what? Not of works. Not of works. So... Obviously, um, it's talking about the, the gift is not from works. That means the salvation does not come from works. If we were talking about the gift being faith, then it said, when it says not of works, it wouldn't make any sense at all. Your faith doesn't come from works. No one ever claims your faith comes from works, right? Some people claim your salvation comes from works. But this says the gift is not by your works. So, Amen. it's very important we understand that. And now let's, let's move on to Romans 4, 4 and 5. Now to him that worketh, his, it, oh, excuse me, now to him that worketh, his is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Okay, so the first part is saying that if you if you do work, um, then um, you are entitled. You're entitled something. You're uh, because you do, you've earned it, you deserve it, and you're they're in your debt. So if you do a job for me. We have an agreement. You do the work, and I'm going to pay you a hundred dollars. You owe me. Then I do the work. I, I'm in your debt because you did it. And I must give you. But then it goes on to say what? But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So this is saying that if someone does worketh not means absolutely zero work, right? It doesn't say worketh just a little bit, or works, you know, maybe half the time. It says works worketh not. That means a person who does no religious work at all. Amen. Okay? It says, even though they've done nothing to work for their salvation, just because of their faith, it's they counted as righteousness. They're saved because of their faith. Even if they did zero work. Amen. Thief on the cross. Yeah, oh, that's a perfect example right there. Okay, we're going to go into a little bit more detail. This is a very important uh, part of this uh, message here, so we'll go into much more detail in the next video.